This is a game I built when I was just 14 years old. And I built tons of other projects when I was literally just a kid in elementary school and high school. Now, if you're under 18 and you think coding is just for computer science majors or people who are naturally good at math, then I'm here to tell you that that is complete I'm gonna share with you exactly how I went from a 10 year old who couldn't even spell algorithm to someone who's now taught hundreds of kids to code, built thousands, yes, literally thousands of projects, worked at Microsoft, led tech startups, and more importantly, actually enjoyed my coding career. And I'm gonna show you the exact roadmap that I wish I had when I started out so I would have saved a ton of time. Oh, and by the way, I've taught kids, many under 18, how to code and seen some insane progress in record time. So if you're watching this and you think coding is too hard or you're scared to get started, then please don't be. If you find coding too hard, then it's likely that you've just had a really bad teacher because I can promise you coding is accessible to everyone if you have the right person teaching you how to do it. Anyways, let me be honest about what you're gonna be up against here, the challenges you're gonna face when you're learning how to code as a kid because it can be a bit difficult. First, time. Everyone assumes that you have unlimited time. But between school, homework, and whatever else your parents are probably making you do, finding consistent time to learn how to code can actually be more difficult as a kid than it can be as an adult. Now second, access. Not everyone has a computer or fast internet or even a private workspace. I remember my first coding setup was literally me taking apart my family computer to see how it worked. And let me tell you, my parents were not happy when it wouldn't turn back on and I forced them to buy me another one. Third, budget. You have zero dollars. You probably don't have a credit card. You probably don't even have some online account or identity. Every course costs money, every book costs money, and you either have to beg your parents to buy it for you or just find a way around it. I know when I was a kid, there was a ton of services I just couldn't use because I didn't have a credit card, so I couldn't even register for the free trial. And then lastly, terminology. When I first heard someone say implicit or object-oriented programming, I literally had to spend more time figuring out what those words meant than watching the tutorial. So the coding world is full of jargon, complex terms, and everyone assumes that you know what these words mean, but it can actually be quite difficult, especially for people that aren't English native speakers. Anyways, here's the thing, and this is crucial. These disadvantages shouldn't hold you back. As a kid, you have massive advantages when it comes to learning anything. First of all, you learn insanely fast, like stupidly fast, it's hard to imagine. You also have no pressure, no timeline, you don't have some boss breathing down your neck, you don't need to make money to pay rent, and this means you can mess around, you can break things, and you can actually have fun when you're learning. And when something finally does work, the feeling is incredible, and I know that's what got me addicted to coding, doing something really challenging, but eventually figuring it out and feeling really accomplished. Anyways, before we get into the exact roadmap here on how you should learn this, I wanna tell you about something incredible for any of you that are ambitious high schoolers that are watching this. Now it's called the Knowledge Society or TKS. This is a 10 month global innovation program designed for curious teenagers between 13 to 17 years old who wanna go way beyond traditional school like I would have wanted to do when I was that age. We're talking about diving deep into cutting edge fields like artificial intelligence, gene editing, quantum computing, and emerging technologies that are literally reshaping our world. But here's what makes TKS special. You don't just learn about these technologies, you apply them to solve real world problems like climate change, healthcare breakthroughs, space exploration, clean energy, and more. And you're learning directly from mentors at companies like SpaceX and OpenAI. Now the results speak for themselves as TKS students have raised over $250 million, started 60 plus companies, landed over 1,000 internships at places like Google and NASA, and become accepted to schools like Harvard, Stanford, and MIT. Now if that sounds like you and you wanna go above and beyond and build real things and be a part of something larger, apply now for the 2025 cohort. Spots are limited, so don't wait and use my link in the description. I think this is a great opportunity and something that a lot of you could probably take advantage of. All right, so what I wanna do now is I wanna get into my journey, talking about how I learned to code as a kid and then share some reflections with you. So my journey started when I was about 10 years old and it wasn't because I wanted to be a programmer, I was just insanely curious about how things work. I'd take apart anything electronic that I could get my hands on, like I was talking about before. My parents thought I was just being destructive, but I was really just trying to understand the magic happening inside of these devices. We're talking about iPods, iPads, old computers. Now by middle school, I was that kid doing the Wi-Fi hacking at school. Not because I was malicious, but because I wanted to understand how networks work. So I'd sit in the computer lab figuring out how to get around the school internet restrictions, how to access game websites, how to download software, etc. Then I discovered Minecraft servers. 
I wanted to create my own server with my own custom rules, so I started learning how to code plugins in Java, and then suddenly I was writing this code without even realizing that I was programming. I was just solving problems that I needed for my Minecraft server. Anyways, this led me to work with tools like GameMaker, where I spent countless hours building little games that I then brought to the school laptops and showed my friends. Now, this is not because I wanted to be a game developer, it's because games were the easiest way for me to see my code come to life. So you write some code and then suddenly you see a character jumping around the screen and you have this kind of instant gratification and something that you could show off to other people. Now, the key thing that I think back to when I was learning how to code is that I never set out to become a programmer. I didn't have this goal, like I want to learn programming. All I did is I wanted to build cool stuff. And it just so happened that I was able to do that by learning how to code. So coding quickly became an obsession of mine, again, not because I wanted a job or something, but because I loved building cool stuff. And then eventually it became the way that I made money and the way that I kind of developed my career. All right, so that was kind of my inspiration when I was starting out, but I want to talk to you about exactly how I learned this because I learned so much stuff at a pretty young age. Now, first, I found my people. So I tried tons of YouTube channels, tons of online articles and sites until I found the resources that worked for me. Now, for me personally, that was Sendex, a Python-based channel, and then the new Boston. This guy has tons of videos. I don't think he posts anymore, but he had literally thousands of tutorials before YouTube tutorials were a big thing. Now, these guys just clicked with me. I really liked listening to them. They explained things in a really easy way, and I binged literally every single one of their videos until I learned things like HTML, PHP, JavaScript, etc. Now, the second thing I did that helped me learn quickly was I mastered the split screen method. So I had a video tutorial on the left and the code editor on the right side of my screen. Now, if a video was 10 minutes long, it would take me maybe 30 minutes to finish it. And that's because I'd pause, I'd always be coding along, I'd experiment, I'd break things, I'd fix them, and more importantly, I was just curious. I always wanted to try something different. I never just watched passively. I always tried to guess what the instructor was gonna say next, I'd try to predict the answer to a question, and more importantly, I'd try to break things. I'd try to get error messages all the time. Now third, I embraced being stuck. When I hit a problem, I'd literally Google until I found the answer. Stack Overflow became my best friend and I'd read dozens of answers trying to find solutions and slowly build up my problem solving skills. Sure, I would get frustrated when I had a bug or an error, but I would literally stay up until one or two in the morning sometimes when I had school at like 7 a.m. trying to fix this problem because I was just so stubborn and I wanted to fix the problem. I really liked that problem solving and it was so rewarding to me when I finally found that solution. So I did all of that, which worked really well, but the most important thing that I did is I built projects constantly. I did way more building and coding than I did watching tutorials. I built so many random projects, I literally can't keep track of them all. I did something like a Super Stickman golf game, a mobile app to organize my textbook photos, a better version of my school's terrible websites, physics simulations, a car racing game, an Agario clone, literally anything that seemed fun. And I kid you not, I built hundreds of projects before I graduated high school. Now, these projects taught me more than any tutorial ever could because they forced me to combine everything that I was learning in new ways. So the moral of the story here is that yes, I followed these different strategies, right? I was always interactively learning, I found the best resources, I embraced being stuck, but more importantly, I built so much stuff, it was impossible for me not to get good at this. So with that in mind, let me tell you what worked really well and what I do a lot differently if I were learning how to code as a kid right now. So what worked for me was first of all, starting with Python, at least as my first serious language. That's because the syntax is super clean and I was able to really quickly get some stuff up and running and see some progress. Second, building games first. So before I got into all these advanced projects, building APIs, websites, etc., I built games. That's because they're visual, they're rewarding, and they're fun, and pretty much everyone can understand a game, even if you're five years old. Next, never spending money. Now, when I was a kid, I spent literally zero dollars, probably up until the point I was about 17 or 18 years old and actually had some money on my own on anything. I learned everything for free, whether that was website articles, YouTube videos, free platforms, etc. I didn't pay for anything. Next, I treated it like play, not work. Okay, so I would jump around between different technologies. When I got curious, I'd switch over to something else. I never had this goal, like I need to learn how to code or I have this specific time frame. I was doing this because I genuinely really enjoyed it. Now, here are a few things that I wish I had done differently. First, 
having some kind of roadmap. Now I say this all the time, and yes, messing around and exploring is great, and I don't regret doing that, but I oftentimes spent months learning all kinds of random stuff that I really never ended up using because I just didn't know what I should be learning next. So I learned PHP because it seemed cool. I spent weeks on random Python libraries. I built projects and technologies that are now completely obsolete. And sure, that was good learning and good information, but if I could go back, I'd really try to pick some kind of direction and go deep into one topic before going super wide into a bunch of different areas. Again, it's a nice balance here. You want to explore different areas, but having a solid roadmap just helps you so much make good progress and really advance quite a bit faster. And one last bonus point here, something that I did well, is I built a bunch of projects that solved problems I actually had. So I would recommend you do that as well. Think about a problem you have in your everyday life and try to make projects around that because it's just a lot more relatable, a lot more enjoyable, and you actually finish the projects because you want the solution. Anyways, let me get into now a practical roadmap that I would suggest you follow if you're starting out today as kind of a kid learning how to code. Now, step one, I would suggest start with Python or JavaScript and build simple games. Like I said, games are the best projects you can make, especially as a kid, because they're very visual and everyone understands what a game should be. Don't try to make this advanced, complex backend API system. You can do that later when you're trying to get a job. But for now, build something fun that you understand. Build Pong, build Snake, build a platform, or build your own version of a game. Use modules like Pygame or even just text-based terminal games because at any age, we all know how to make a good game and what we should have and what we shouldn't have. Now, step number two, use video tutorials and LLMs. It's insane that you guys now have ChatGPT, Claude, all of these other AI tools, because when I was programming, I didn't have any of that. If I got stuck, it would literally take me days to find the solution to bugs. Now, you can just copy code into Claude, it can tell you exactly what the error is, and you can advance so much faster. With that said, treat this like a mentor, right? So don't just get it to do things for you, really rely on it to help you solve problems and move faster, not to generate a bunch of code. That just takes the whole enjoyability out of coding. You should still write the code yourself, but just use this as something that can really rapidly advance your progress. And the reason why I suggest videos is because I find it's the most engaging way to learn. And you can pick up a lot of information that you just don't get from articles. I also find it's more fun when you're listening to someone that you can kind of relate to and that you build like a bit of a relationship with watching tons of their videos. Anyways, step number three is to keep it fun. Always keep it fun. And the moment it stops being fun, you're doing something wrong. If you're bored, switch to a different project, try something new, go to a different language. You need to keep your passion alive because coding is actually fun. So many people on the internet just make learning how to code absolutely brutal. They go through these super advanced topics. They dive right into the math. They're you know, sprinting through a roadmap. If this is not something that's fun, especially when you're 14, 15 years old, how are you going to keep doing this when you're 20, 21, 22? That's the one thing that I did. I always made this fun for myself. So even today, I still enjoy coding and I still work on random stuff that I find fun. Now, step number four, and this is more for those of you that want to take this a bit more seriously. Once you've really had your fun, you've built a bunch of projects, learn something that's statically typed. Okay, so learn a programming language like C++ or Go. Now, this is going to teach you a lot more advanced features like memory management and give you a deeper understanding of how computers actually work. A lot of you will really enjoy this. Some of you will probably hate this. But again, this is mostly for those of you that really do want to make this a career and you're saying, OK, I, you know, I've had my fun and actually the fun now is to challenge myself more. If you're thinking like that, then learn a statically typed programming language after you've had some fun with the dynamically typed languages like Python and JavaScript. Next, step number five, build something that people actually use. Create an app, a website, any kind of tool that solves a real problem and try your best to get one user. Having someone else using your code is just so incredibly important and teaches you so much. So really aim for that goal. How do I get one person to use something that I make? I'm now in my 20s. I'm 24 years old. I've taught hundreds of kids to code. I've seen 12 year olds build apps that are used by thousands of people. I've watched 15 year old kids create games that people actually play. And I've mentored teenagers who have gone on to internship at some of the top companies in the world, like Google, Amazon, Facebook, SpaceX, etc. Now, the reason I know why the content in this video works isn't just because it worked for me. It's because I've seen it work for literally hundreds of other people that are under the age of 18. As a kid, and I'm saying kid not to be derogatory, but just because you're under 18, you have something that many other people don't have. You have the time to experiment, 
the freedom to fail, and a brain that's literally wired for learning. As a young person, you can learn so insanely fast, and if you're willing to challenge your brain rather than just going on TikTok every single day, you're gonna thank yourself for it in the future. So if you're someone who's interested in coding, ignore all the narratives out there and just go there and do it. I promise you that you can do this, you can really get good at it quite quickly, and just remember, keep this fun and make sure that you're really, really building and actually kind of challenging your brain and your skills every single day rather than just aimlessly watching tutorials. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you in this video. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like. I'd love to hear your story and kind of what you're doing, especially if you're a kid in the comments down below. So let me know. I look forward to seeing you in another video.